Ken Rex McElroy, June 1, 1934 to July 10, 1981, was a resident of Skidmore, Missouri, United States. He was known as the town bully, and his unsolved killing became the focus of international attention. Over the course of his life, McElroy was accused of dozens of felonies, including assault, child molestation, statutory rape, arson, animal cruelty, hog and cattle rustling, and burglary. In all, he was indicted 21 times but escaped conviction each time, except for the last. In 1981, McElroy was convicted of attempted murder in the shooting of the town's 70-year-old grocer, Ernest Bo Bowenkamp. McElroy successfully appealed the conviction and was released on bond, after which he engaged in an ongoing harassment campaign against Bowenkamp and others who were sympathetic to Bowenkamp, including the town's Church of Christ minister. He appeared in a local bar, the D&G Tavern, armed with an M1 Garand rifle and bayonet, and later threatened to kill Bowenkamp. The next day, McElroy was shot to death in broad daylight as he sat with his wife Trina in his pickup truck on Skidmore's Main Street. He was struck by bullets from at least two different firearms, in front of a crowd of people estimated as numbering between 30 and 46. To date, no one has been charged in connection with McElroy's death. Early life McElroy was born in 1934 the 15th of 16 children born to a poor, migrant tenant farming couple named Tony and Mabel, nay Lister, McElroy, who had moved between Kansas and the Ozarks before settling outside of Skidmore. He dropped out of school at age 15 in the 8th grade and quickly established a local reputation as a cattle rustler, small time thief, and womanizer. For more than two decades, McElroy was suspected of being involved in theft of grain, gasoline, alcohol, antiques, and livestock, but he avoided conviction when charges were brought against him 21 times, often after witnesses refused to testify because he allegedly intimidated them, frequently by following his targets or parking outside their homes and watching them. He was represented by defense attorney Richard Jean McFadden of Gallatin, Missouri. McElroy fathered more than 10 children with different women. He met his last wife, Trina McLeod, 1957 to 2012, when she was 12 years old and in eighth grade. He raped McLeod repeatedly, also burning her house down, and shooting the family dog before her parents relented and agreed to their marriage. She became pregnant when she was 14, dropped out of school in the ninth grade, and went to live with McElroy and his second wife Alice. McElroy divorced Alice and married Trina in order to escape charges of statutory rape, to which she was the only witness. Sixteen days after Trina gave birth, both she and Alice fled to Trina's mother's and stepfather's house. According to court records, McElroy tracked them down and brought them back. He then returned to Trina's parents' home when they were away and, once again, shot the family dog and burned the house down. Events prior to his killing based on Trina's story, McElroy was indicted in June 1973 for arson, assault, and statutory rape. He was arrested, booked, arraigned, and released on $2,500 bail. Trina and her baby were placed in foster care at a home in Maryville, Missouri. McElroy sat outside the foster home for hours at a time staring at it. He told the foster family that he would trade girl for girl to get his child back, since he knew where the foster family's biological daughter went to school and what bus route she rode. Additional charges were filed against McElroy. On July 27, 1976, Skidmore farmer Romaine Henry said McElroy shot him twice with a shotgun after Henry challenged him for shooting weapons on Henry's property. McElroy was charged with assault with intent to kill. McElroy denied he was at the scene. As the case dragged on without a court date, Henry said McElroy had parked outside his home at least 100 times. At the trial, two raccoon hunters testified they were with McElroy the day of the shooting away from Henry's property. Henry was forced to admit in court, under questioning by McElroy's attorney Richard Jean McFadden, that he had concealed his own petty criminal conviction from more than 30 years previous. McElroy was acquitted, 1981 killing in 1980, one of McElroy's children got into an argument with a clerk, Evelyn Sumi, in a local grocery store owned by 70-year-old Ernest, Bo, Bowenkamp and his wife Lois, allegedly because the young McElroy child tried to steal some candy. McElroy began stalking the Bowenkamp family, and eventually threatened Bo Bowenkamp in the back of his store with a shotgun in hand. In the ensuing confrontation, McElroy shot Bowenkamp in the neck, Bowenkamp survived, and McElroy was arrested and charged with attempted murder. McElroy was convicted at trial of assault, but freed on bail pending his appeal. Immediately after being released at a post-trial hearing, McElroy went to the D&G Tavern, 
a local bar, with an M1 Garand rifle with a bayonet attached, and made graphic threats about what he would do to Bo Bowenkamp. This led to several patrons deciding to see what they could legally do to prevent McElroy from harming anyone else. Nottoway County Sheriff Dan Estes suggested they form a neighborhood watch. McElroy's appeal hearing was again delayed. On the morning of July 10, 1981, townspeople met at the Legion Hall in the center of town with Sheriff Estes to discuss how to protect themselves. During the meeting, McElroy arrived at the D&G Tavern with Trina. As he sat drinking at the bar, word got back to the men at the Legion Hall that he was in town. Sheriff Estes instructed the assembled group not to get into a direct confrontation with McElroy, but instead seriously consider forming a neighborhood watch program. Estes then drove out of town in his police cruiser. The citizens decided to go to the tavern en masse. The bar soon filled completely. After McElroy finished his drinks, he purchased a six-pack of beer, left the bar, and entered his pickup truck. Someone shot at McElroy while he was sitting in his truck. He was shot at several times and hit twice, once by a centerfire rifle and once by a .22 rimfire rifle. In all, there were 46 potential witnesses to the shooting, including Trina McElroy, who was in the truck with her husband when he was shot. No one called for an ambulance. Only Trina claimed to identify a gunman. Every other witness either was unable to name an assailant or claimed not to have seen who fired the fatal shots. The DA declined to press charges. An extensive federal investigation did not lead to any charges. One local resident later told investigators when asked what happened, he needed a killing. McElroy was buried at Memorial Park Cemetery in St. Joseph, Missouri. On July 9, 1984, Trina McElroy filed a $5 million wrongful death lawsuit against the town of Skidmore, County of Nottoway, Sheriff Danny Estes, Steve Peters, Mayor of Skidmore, and Del Clement, whom Trina accused of being the shooter, but who was never charged. The case was later settled out of court by all parties for $17,600, with no one admitting guilt, for the stated reason of avoiding costly legal fees should the suit proceed. Trina remarried and moved to Lebanon, Missouri, where she died of cancer on her 55th birthday on January 24, 2012. In popular culture 60 Minutes ran a segment on the story in 1982. A 1988 book about McElroy's murder, In Broad Daylight, by Harry N. McLean, was adapted into the made-for-TV movie In Broad Daylight in 1991 starring Brian Dennehy, Marcia Gay Harden, and Chris Cooper. The case was the inspiration for the song, Diesel in the Dust, song from British hard rock band UFO's album Making Contact, 1983. The case was the inspiration for, The Hunting Accident, the second episode of Renegade, 1992. The case was the inspiration for No One Saw a Thing, a 2019 television documentary miniseries on Sundance TV. See also list of unsolved murders Fuente Ovijuna references external links in broad daylight at IMDb without mercy at IMDb.